some current events, some stuff that we see going on in the marketplace, and some things that affect our practice uh, as advisors. Um, first off, here in the news now, we see Obamacare is in front of the Supreme Court. Uh, we're expecting a ruling in June, and one reason we're talking about Obamacare here is because uh, where nobody's sure exactly how, but it's going to affect uh, how we plan our own care. So uh, one couple interesting notes here I see on Rasmussen, uh, the polling service, uh, they report that 61% of people expect a repeal of Obamacare. Uh, it looks like uh, most of the polls you see, a majority of people are in favor of a repeal. Uh, most people don't expect it to do them a lot of good. A lot of people will suggest uh, that they will lose their workplace coverage or, or whatever. There's a lot of conjecture on exactly how that's going to roll out if Obamacare stays in place and uh, gets implemented over the next couple of years as planned. And another interesting uh, stat from the uh, Rasmussen, 35% uh, of people are confident that Medicare will pay them all promised benefits. And so as we get in later in the webinar here, as we get into more how are we going to plan to take care of ourselves, that's a very revealing stat. If just 35% of us are confident that Medicare is going to do the substantial portion of that, then we, that, that adds extra emphasis to some of the planning we need to do on our own. So that's enough, enough said on that. We'll probably get into those subjects a little bit more later on. Uh, couple other things to touch on here. If you were on my last webinar, I brought this up. There's a Glenn Neesham case. This is a California agent who is facing jail time for what was deemed by the courts to be an unsuitable sale. Actually, they charged him with theft for selling an annuity uh, to a what turned out to be a mentally impaired uh, client. He had, uh, he had no information on that. He's not trained to diagnose any kind of impairment. And there was really, according to him, there was no, uh, no indication that the person was not completely confident or competent to make the transaction. Nonetheless, uh, a lot of people think it was an overzealous prosecutor, whatever the case may have been, but he is now facing jail time for theft over the sale of an annuity. So, uh, what we have here, we have a template. Ask us, there is a template. It's not really a, a silver side form, but it's an agent disclosure form that we recommend uh, you implement in your practice. Some sort of uh, clarification up front about what uh, the nature of your relationship with your client is. So it, it, you, you want to clarify. You're an insurance agent. You're qualified to give insurance advice annuity advice, but unless you're an RIA or some kind of, uh, some kind of a licensed uh, investment advisor or unless you're a, a CPA or some kind of tax expert or some kind of legal expert, you want to clarify that the nature of your advice is not tax, legal, or investment. The nature of your advice is in, in the life and annuity arena. So that's something we suggest given the, the, the Nisham kind of thing, we need to do everything we can to protect ourselves as much as possible. So we advise clients to use something, or agents to use something like this disclosure form. You can call us, we can ask for it. It's not a, it's not a proprietary form of ours, but it's a template that you might want to use that exact thing or something similar. Uh, also, one thing, as, as a, a lot of the people on the webinar today are, are agents contracted with Silverside, uh, most of you are producing through through somebody. Um, one thing, as you're going out to to write your business or you're preparing to present to a client, uh, things are changing so fast nowadays, and states and companies are requiring specific training, whether it's an NAIC uh, model regulation state for annuity training or company specific training of some type or you got your LIMRA or your anti money laundering or whoever you're doing that. There's a laundry list of things. Before we've seen a lot of cases delayed lately. A lot of commissions have been held up and policy issues have been held up because there's one or two things that are not up to date. So 
take a quick inventory when you're going to present a product to a client uh, that you're up to date with, with your state and with your carrier on all the training and compliance you need. And also, the, our, our insurance carriers are all changing apps. Uh, it seems like almost daily suitability forms are changing, applications are changing, and we're getting business turned in uh, on old apps or, or using some old forms, and that holds up the processing. And as everybody knows, we're cash with app uh, annuities, they don't issue overnight like they used to, even, even if everything's in order. Once they get through suitability, it, it usually takes two, three, four days. If we're using the wrong forms or we don't have all our training up to date, sometimes it's, it's taken a whole lot longer than that. So, okay, enough on that. Let's move along a little bit here. I'm going to show you a chart, which if you've been on our webinars before, this I think is a very telling chart about what we're dealing with. This is the 10-year bond rate going back to uh, the early 60s here. And, and actually this, I printed this off a few days ago. It wasn't actually in January, but somehow if you max, this is off of Yahoo. And if you max it, it defaults to show you January to January or whatever if you're going back 40, 50 years. Uh, point is still valid. I checked the 10-year the bond was at, I think, 2.05 this morning. And since most of our financial institutions are, are driving a lot of their, of their resources and reserves into bonds, uh, the, the low rate, as we see, it's historically low. It was in the 4 percent range back in the early 60s, spiked up in the late 70s, early 80s with all the inflation and all those things we had going on. And uh, then it's gradually come down and now it's at historic low rates. So that's why we're not seeing the bonuses, the caps, the crediting rates on our, our favorite annuity and life products because there's just, the, the pie is just getting sliced thinner. So from a planning perspective, we need to keep uh, abreast of what still is out there uh, as that we can use to uh, maximize what we can offer to our clients as far as value and as far as uh, return on their money or, or, or meeting their needs. So I'm going to touch on a couple products here real quick that we think are a little bit better than, uh, than as far as a crediting standpoint than some of the other stuff on the market today. And, I'm just going to point these out real quick, and then I'm going to turn it over to Grayson here. Uh, we really like this Sedge Core nine-year fixed indexed annuity. It's got some great features. It's got a 5% bonus all the way to age 85. Uh, it's got a 4.5% S&P annual point-to-point, 4.5% -point, cap. That's that for any kind of A-rated company out there, or even even some of the better uh, B plus plus type companies. Uh, that's very high, very competitive. It's got a cumulative free withdrawal. That's a that's a very unique feature. Makes the product very liquid. Uh, two percent guaranteed uh, rate on this. This is two percent on one hundred percent of premium as an overall product guarantee. You see a lot of you see a lot of guarantees of maybe one and a half percent on eighty seven and a half percent of premium, whatever. This is two percent on one hundred percent. The net effect of that we can illustrate this for you. Give us a call if you have a client you, you're interested in presenting to. Uh, this is going to illustrate very well. Uh, it's going it's to you can put it in front of your client. It's a company-driven illustration, which you don't see a whole lot on indexed annuities these days. But it's going to show a guaranteed positive surrender value after year two on a nine-year product with no MVA. And going back to the bond chart. Uh, as low as bond rates are now, as low as interest rates are now, they're likely to go not much lower and inevitably they'll probably go higher. There won't be a market value adjustment on this if for some reason your client is in a situation they have to surrender it uh, early. Uh, they still have the regular surrender schedule which is pretty reasonable on this product as well. Uh, excellent rated carrier. One more thing I wanted to touch on about Sagicor. Uh, their SPIA rates, their period certain SPIA rates right now are way above the market. They're the most competitive out there, so we don't necessarily write a whole lot of SPIAs, but from time to time when we're designing a case, 
is something that uh, that we can use to fit in there. So I'm going to move along and touch on one more product here. This is a product that's getting a lot of play right now. It's a five-year MICA, five-year multi-rate guaranteed annuity. Guarantees you 3% for five years, which in and of itself is, is about as competitive as you're going to find. The nice feature this has is uh, income rider with no cost against the cash value. So it's a free income rider with an 8% roll-up. Very, very competitive. We'll get a lot of play with that as a CD alternative kind of thing. Uh, Oxford's very uh, user-friendly as far as generating company uh, marketing materials for you that are branded to you if you want to put out inserts or flyers or, or whatever. They, they have some great material for that. And they're having a nice trip to uh, Disney World, uh, easy to qualify for, only $735,000 premium. So that's, a, that's, a, that's one thing that's really getting a, a lot of play right now. And uh, let's see here. I think I am ready to check uh, Grayson's status. Grayson, that's about all I have on this stuff. Uh, okay. Are you ready to go? Yeah, let's take a, let's take a run at it. Okay. Um, and hey guys, I'm going to go pretty quickly here today. We're talking about maybe half an hour. Go ahead and type questions in if you have them, and we're going to try to get those addressed before we uh, end the webinar. Um, but uh, we've got a pretty good crew, so follow with me if you can. Also, write our number down, 480-998-1286, uh, and give us a call after uh, the webinar if we don't get your questions answered. Uh, but like Rick was talking about, really what I'm going to go through from a 10,000-foot view today is uh, the asset-based care are the asset-based care products that are available on the market today, and it's really, really important to just understand the basic concepts. I'm not going to show you, I'm not going to try to sell you one product. I'm going to show you a concept. We're going to show a couple of products specifically, but just so that um, this situation takes a little bit better shape in your mind. But really what we're dealing with, guys, is a landscape that's changing for the retirees in America. 70% of seniors are going to need some sort of long-term care. That's not my statistic. That's from the Wall Street Journal, Journal, and with an aging America, more people in that age group, uh, this could be the next financial crisis, and a lot of people are starting to talk about it. And the reason it could be a financial crisis with so many people needing some sort of care, and 90% of them have no private long-term care coverage insurance. Um, Medicare is not going to pay these costs. So it is an absolutely staggering situation that we're dealing with. In aging in America, 90% of people don't have coverage, and some of the standalone long-term care insurance carriers, the John Hancock types, a lot of them are leaving the long-term care uh, coverage insurance space. They're leaving. So it, there's a huge void here, guys, and, and I'm going to show you after <laughs> – you know, kind of, kind of showing you a horrible problem. I am going to show you a solution, but at the end of the day, you have a lot of seniors that haven't planned for long-term care situation, even though 70% of them are going to need some help, and it's going to end up devastating to their finances and to um, their family's finances as well. So, when I do workshops around the country about long-term care and the pending crisis in America, really, I will always ask a group of seniors, uh, retirees, uh, even some baby boomers, um, you know, age 50 plus, hey, why don't you have coverage? Statistically, 90% of you don't. Why not? Um, universally, number one response I get is that it's too expensive. Okay. But even beyond that, um, be past the costs, if you don't use it, you lose it. That's what's in a lot of your retiree clients' minds. They, you know, they don't look at this uh, like they look at homeowners insurance. They don't want to deal with a burnt down house and no insurance, but yet somehow it just hasn't been addressed because it's a very difficult topic to talk about. The long term care insurance situation. Also, they will mention to me, you know, it's kind of confusing the kind of what sort of coverage. Um, one of these long-term care policies actually has. What is paid for? Do I have to be in a nursing home? 
Uh, so that can be confusing and there's a lot of fine print and believe me, if you've been through some of these contracts, it can be confusing. But also the underwriting can be pretty intimidating for seniors. Uh, your retirees, they, they have in their minds that they, the insurance companies want only the, the people in pristine health. And they're kind of nervous to go through underwriting. They've had a couple of issues. So that can be an issue as well. Um, we put this little caricature together, which I, which I uh, get a kick out of. Uh, put this character, caricature together um, because it is, this long-term care, this healthcare cost situation, is, it is the pink elephant in the room. Um, and in, in our little caricature, we've got um, a retiree reading about the reduction in, in Medicare benefits in the 12th hour and healthcare costs are eating up everything uh, that he's worked so hard to, to put together. So um, what is the solution? I just showed you the horror show of what's going on. And now I want to show you specifically an annuity solution. This is asset-based care. So if your your client doesn't doesn't have or isn't really interested in long-term care, standalone long-term care insurance, make them understand that there are some alternatives out there. Uh, tax law just changed in 2010. It's part of the Prote Pension Protection Act from 2006. Uh, but seniors can take withdrawals from specially designated annuities income tax free uh, if it's triggered for long term care and people say to me well grace and a lot of those costs can be uh, written off in a tax situation anyway absolutely true but when you consider the power of 1035ing old annuities with big tax deferred gains into an annuity that leverages up and it can leverage up up to five and a half times, okay, absolutely huge leverage, and it's completely income tax-free for long-term care. It's a powerful tool, and I'm telling you, we're, we're going to go uh, into some more specifics on this. If you have, this is one thing if you take from our webinar today, take this, write this down. If you have retirees with older annuities, and when I say older, I mean down to three, maybe 4% surrender charges or older um, and some big tax deferred gains with, and, and your client has no long-term care coverage, you have to show them this product or somebody else is going to. It, is, it, it can be an absolute no-brainer for a, a specific client situations. So I'm going to show you one of them specifically uh, that Rick and I like to put in front of our clients, but understand call us everyone's situation is different i'm going to show you one of these annuities just so it takes better shape in your hey, mind hey grayson uh, can i interject real quick for a second there one other effect that, that we might want to keep an eye out for is positive mva and i was talking a little bit ago about the, the the product with no mva as low as bond rates have gotten as you're out there reviewing your client's situation a lot of times they might have a few years of surrender left they might have Five, six, seven percent. I was working on a case yesterday with a ten and a half percent surrender charge. The MBA wiped that out. So net yeah. of MBA, they were going to be positive. So that's one thing as you're reviewing clients. And if they do have older annuities that aren't out of surrender, or maybe even if they are, but if they're not out of surrender, uh, you might want to call into the carrier or have your client call in and see what their net of MBA surrender might be. Uh, there might be a little bit of windfall there that, that nobody even knows about. Absolutely. And that's a good point. And guys, if that doesn't really make sense to you, call, give us a call and we can walk you through how to, how to check any market value adjustment that your client's annuity may have. This particular one's coming out of an A-plus carrier, uh, 130 years old. They really take pride in being on the cutting edge of asset-based care. So you're really starting at the top here. Single premium deferred fixed rate annuity. I th I'm guessing most people in, 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 are pretty familiar with how those work, but there's a built-in continuation of benefits for long-term care. So kind of like if you're familiar with the income riders, there's a giant income rider on this thing for long-term care, withdrawals are completely non-taxable if triggered for long-term care related expenses. So there are really two pools of money. There's an accumulating annuity 
that your client can use for anything, you know, typical 10% surrender charges. They can use for anything, but there's another there's another account, like I said, kind of like those um, income riders. There's a pool of money that, that your client can use for long-term care as well. It can be single or joint. It can be single, and I highlighted this, single with an eligible person. So if we're considering the tax situation and you have a client, um, you have retirees, they have to be husband and wife, but let's say just one of them has a large annuity that has some big tax deferred gains and you really don't want to, uh, you, you're worried about moving it into a joint account because that would be a taxable event. You don't have to with this product, you can 1035, like for like, let's say it's the husband's annuity, transfer it to his name, uh, 1035 style, but he can then add his wife as an eligible person. Not going to happen too often, but when you run into this situation, uh, a lot of times a light bulb is going to go off over the head of your, your clients, and they're going to be really excited that you showed them uh, this potential. Um, so it, I'm sorry, guys. I, I got a little bit ahead there. Let me back up. Um, I, I want to put some numbers on it so that you it'll take better shape in your mind. But again, everyone's situation is different. So um, we're going to give you an actual form that you can fill out with your clients that you fax it back to us and we will get you illustrations. We will get, we will case work with you to show you the best of what can be provided to your clients. But take a look right here. Let's say you have a 65 year old uh, client. She's got an older annuity. She really doesn't intend on using it for income, but she's got no long-term care coverage. You 1035 it in and after a year, she has an accumulation value of a little over $100,000. Not impressive, but that's not the core competency of the strategy. Really look at line two there, the continuation of benefits. $455,000 of the insurance company's money, kind of like an income rider, is, is there for her use for long-term care. So she has a total value of $556,000 that she can use. In this particular case, it works out to 11 years of monthly benefits and, and tax-free again, guys. Um, I backed up, sorry. Um, fast forwarding 10 years, just to show you there is some accumulation. After year 10, she's got $103,000 in this case. Um, the continua continuation of benefits continues to grow and it'll grow contractually at a higher rate, just like those income riders. Now she's got over $616,000 that she can use for long-term care. It, do you think that might cover um, a, a situation where she has Alzheimer's and, is, and needs help for a number of years? That's exactly what this does. It covers the, the worst of the long-term care situations. Um, so I show you that pool of $600,000. How would she access that a portion of that? money will be paid out monthly up to 138 months and that is a case by case specific situation cash benefit now this can be priced out as an indemnity which can be huge if if you're not familiar with the difference between a reimbursement and indemnity just in a nutshell reimbursements exactly that your client spends money on long term care the insurance company reimburses them an indemnity, there's simply a number that you that your client has that they're going to get every month if they're spending anything on long-term care. Um, so an indemnity really helps maintain your client's independence. Uh, the trigger is uh, if they need help with two out of six activities of daily living or they're cognitively impaired. That's pretty standard in the insurance world today. They don't have to be in a nursing home. So you know, to rewind, when I'm standing in front of a group of retirees and I talk about long-term care, it, it, the reason it's such a difficult topic to talk about is almost universally, when they think of long-term care, they think of a nursing home, and nobody likes that. No one likes that. And then what happens after the nursing home? Well, they're gone. So it's a difficult topic. If you can start it off on a better foot where you can say, hey, you have some older annuities, we can turn tax deferred and tax free. And on top of that, you don't have to go to a nursing home. 
we can help you stay in your own home. There's no waiting period on this product. There is a 90-day elimination period, which is pretty standard as well. Now, if you're typically selling annuities and you're not that familiar with underwriting, do not let the underwriting intimidate you on this product. Uh, it's more concise than traditional long-term care. Basically, a phone call. Um, more details, call us and we'll go through it. I need to, I need to speed up and catch up a little bit here. Um, just do not do not let the underwriting of this, it's simplified, don't let it be intimidating. So now your clients can in instantly increase their rainy day savings up to 550%. The rainy day savings is, hey, I don't need this money for day-to-day, uh, month-to-month expenses, but if, but if I need help, if something health-wise happens, that's the rainy day savings. You can leverage it up huge and turn tax deferred into tax free. It can be priced as an indemnity also. So that they're simply getting a, a, a tax free income stream every single month. Um, so, you know, a lot of information here. I'm kind of talking about it from uh, 10,000 feet. But just to try to build a bridge between the idea and how you're going to uh, get in front of your clients and have something good to show them. What, what is that bridge? Some of the catchphrases, some of the things in, in uh, my experience talking about asset-based care with retirees, he, if you don't use it, you don't lose it. The money is still there for your estate. Maybe your client is one of the lucky 30%. They just get called home in the middle of the night. The money is still there for their their estate. The grandchildren can still go to college, even at you know at these tuition costs. Um, Ten thirty five and from old annuities, like I talked about earlier, that's huge. You're leveraging up and turning tax deferred into tax free, and you can do partial ten thirty fives too. So if that kind of leverage would create overkill, if your client has a five hundred thousand dollar annuity, you can do partial ten thirty fives. You can add an eligible person. So I'm trying to give you some ideas. Just go through in your mind some of the clients, um, existing clients you have. If that fits their situation, where one of them has an older annuity, one of a married couple has an older annuity, and neither of them have long-term care coverage, it's huge. You need to put this in front of them. Um, I don't want the asset-based care products annuity or we're going to talk about one of the life products here in a minute. I don't, I don't want them thought of as the consolation prize, but in the real world, it happens. People get turned down for standalone long-term care. Well, you can get coverage here. They don't have to be in pristine health, and we even have some products that require no underwriting but provide some long-term care coverage. So if you don't show these products to your clients, somebody else is going to. Okay, I want to talk about a life product here, but Rick, did you want to? Did, was there anything you wanted to uh, consolidate on the annuity? Uh, no, why don't we move along here? I got a few questions coming in, uh, and we can probably address most of those towards the end if you don't cover them here in the next few slides. Okay, so um, different, lots of different opportunities out there, and that's why I want you to call in get our asset-based care questionnaire. It's a one-pager that you can sit down with your clients or even potential clients, um, and it's going to help you understand their situation. You fax that to us, and we'll show you what's, what's available out there for your clients. And one of the most important things to understand is in, in your client's situation, let's say they have no coverage for long-term care, they do have assets. Well, if something medical-wise was going to happen to them, what money would they use? Where is that existing uh, long-term care coverage financing? And that's going to help us determine the best situation for them. I just talked about how if you have clients with older annuities, tax-deferred is great, but tax-free is unbelievable. So that's kind of a no-brainer. But what if, let's say you have the same 65-year-old lady who's a client, she has a CD coming due, $100,000 CD, and she's sick of 0.6% or whatever the rate is out there right now. Well, here's another idea. Using if, again, there's some simplified underwriting on this one, but using a life insurance product. Um, and the important thing 
before we, I even go into this, when you're discussing these products with your clients, I told you to write down tax deferred and tax free. That's a huge thing. Another thing, because I will be standing up in front of a group of maybe 30 or 40 retirees, and I will mention life insurance, and their eyes will roll, uh, and and they will say, "Grace, and I don't, I'm retired. I don't need any life insurance. The kids are long out of college. The house is paid for. What do I need life insurance for? I don't want to keep paying all those premiums. I don't need it. That's just for an insurance guy to make money on." Well, here's, here's another thing to write down, guys. Tell your clients before you even go down this road, life insurance is changing. Okay? What I'm going to, about to show you, say this to your client, what I'm about to show you is life insurance that you don't have to die to use, and you don't have to keep paying premiums in, and you don't have to worry about the value of it going down. You, you tell them that and call me and I'll go through that list again. But if you tell them that, you just address just about every issue they're going to have uh, with this strategy, okay? Because this is a single premium life product. You have a 65-year-old lady. She has a CD coming due. Doesn't need the money for day-to-day -day expenses. She doesn't, she doesn't have any standalone long-term care coverage. So... You bring it into this life product, single premium. She gets an instant 10% bonus. She has $110,000 of net premium day one. Almost doubles her money immediately. $186,000 guaranteed. She doesn't have to keep paying premiums. It's not on a UL chassis that, she, that all of a sudden she's 83 and she has to pour more premiums into to keep the, the, the death benefit. That's guaranteed. You almost doubled her money overnight tax free now in this low interest rate environment how long would you what strategy can beat that well how long would you have to be in one of the annuities out there to almost double the money after tax a long long time and look this thing can be indexed uh, for growth without risk it, it does have stock indexing no downside risk that's a guaranteed death benefit but there, there can be growth to it, um, and no extra licensing on your part. You don't need a Series 7, Series 6 to sell this. It, there's no downside risk. Okay, great. Your client says, you just doubled my money tax-free overnight. What good does that do me? It's life insurance. Well, the next line, check it out. $6,000 chronic illness benefit paid out monthly over 33 months to her. The, pro the policy has to be enforced for a year, but you just doubled her money. She can still use that money for herself the, for the only reason she would have used it anyway, she, if she needed help. Uh, it's a no-brainer. So really, the death benefit becomes the new cash value, and you almost doubled her money tax-free overnight. Her, she, if she gets called home, she's one of the 30% that just passes away in the middle of the night. Her kids get a larger and a tax-free inheritance. It's win-win for everybody. Chronic illness benefit. Again, it, she doesn't have to go to a nursing home. If she just has a licensed physician sign off that she needs help with two out of six activities of daily living, that six, in this case, that $6,000 check is going to come every month for 33 months. It's an indemnity, not a reimbursement. She doesn't have to justify that $6,000 check every month. She doesn't have to show them that she spent it on long-term care. Doesn't have, to, doesn't have to justify it. Now, again, this policy does have to be available for a year. And 200 and really what we're doing is accelerating a death benefit back to the policyholder is really what we're doing. And the maximum is $250,000 for that. Now, let's say uh, the death benefit does grow. It's indexed and it grows to 300000 She accelerates $250,000 back to herself for long-term care. There's still $50,000 there tax-free for her estate. So instantly increase your client's estate while decreasing the estate's taxability. The heirs are positioned for a larger tax-free inheritance, and you are helping your clients maintain control. They maintain their independence. 
this money, they don't have to go to a nursing home. They didn't lose control of this money. In, a, in some of your clients' situations, especially with CD rates this low, that's kind of the ideal source of funds, um, but not the only one. It, it can be literally a no-brainer. Now, and I know I'm pouring a lot of information on you guys, but it, you know when you're talking to clients, retirees or near retirees, they don't have to be retired yet. Fifty somethings need to think about this um, because this is truly an investment first. It's a, they, like I said, they don't have to die to use this money. It's truly an investment first, but it's it's tax advantaged for that healthcare situation. It's win-win. Um, so when you're talking to your near retirees, you know, baby boomers or retirees about these asset-based care products, again, the source of funds is really important. You know what to show them if, if they've got an older annuity that has tax-deferred gains, turn tax-deferred into tax-free. I just showed you a classic situation with a $100,000 fee. Well, what if you have the same 65-year-old female client, her source of funds that she doesn't need for month-to-month -month expenses is her IRA. Let's say she has a $100,000 IRA. Well, now what do we do? You cannot put pre-tax money straight into life insurance. We have strategies. Here's a powerful one. We are going to take her IRA Let's say same 65-year-old lady, $100,000 IRA. You move it into a pre-tax immediate annuity, and it's going to pay out for seven years. Okay. Now, this is not tax avoidance. This is not tax evasion. She's going to get 1099 every year. She's going to get roughly $16,000 a year coming out of this immediate annuity. But that's going to pay the premiums for a seven pay version of the life product I just showed you. Um, we're just, we're just uh, stretching the payment stream out because it's coming out of an IRA. And we're stretching her tax liability out over seven years. She's not, she doesn't have to pay one giant lump sum to the IRS. So she gets an instant $176,000 death benefit. And the premiums coming out of the immediate annuity, so it kind of becomes two sales in one. The premiums are going to come out for seven years out of this annuity, but the insurance company has it automated. So you don't have to worry about being at your client's kitchen table when the annuity check comes in. Now we have to write a check to the life policy. It's not, you don't have to do that. It's really two sales that are put into one. Okay, so she's instantly got a tax-free $176,000 guaranteed death benefit. The same growth without risk as I just talked about, uh, as you see the numbers there, if the future equals the past, $263,000. Uh, so some good growth without risk. And really, this kind of turns into an alternative to a Roth rollover because really what you're doing is spreading tax liability out over seven years. Um, she still has access to that death benefit. She didn't lose control of this money. She, this, this is um, an indemnity policy again, so she doesn't have to be in a nursing home. She just gets a check every month. And it's on a whole life chassis again, so there's no downside risk to that, um, to that instant death benefit. Now, because there are seven premiums, uh, there's more flexibility than the single premium policy. Uh, it's not a modified endowment contract, if that does make sense to you. So she can take, you know, after seven years, she can start taking money out of the cash value for whatever reason. She, it has, doesn't have to have anything to do with health care, long-term care, anything like that. So there's some, there's some great tax advantage. Uh, flexibility because it is a seven premium policy. Um, so I, I, I want to I want you guys to sit with this concept for a second because you've talked to I'm sure you've talked to a number of potential clients 
that really the, the money that they don't need for month to month expenses is in, in an IRA. Well, they don't really look at that until let's say they have a hundred thousand dollar IRA. They think of that as maybe seventy thousand dollars of really their money because they owe taxes. And a lot of them are very nervous to take money out because of the of, of the tax situation. With this strategy I just showed you, you are taking a pool of a hundred thousand dollar IRA instead of turning it into a smaller pool of after-tax money, you're turning it into a larger pool of after-tax money. Think about that. A pool of pre-tax money, pre-tax money they still owe, becomes a larger pool of after-tax money. That's a pretty powerful concept. Now, the, the idea of, of uh, filtering IRA money into a life insurance policy for wealth transfer, that concept isn't new. Uh, we, that's been going on for years and years. What is new is the easy access, very liberal access to that death benefit for health issues for the policyholder. So you're turning pre-tax money into after-tax uh, benefits. Um, again, life insurance you do not have to die to use. So really powerful concept. Write that part down too. And really what I want you to do now guys is uh, give us a call 480-998-1286. Write that down. Um, I, really the bridge so from the concepts we just talked about to how do I sit in front of a client or potential clients and really make the case take shape, well, fill out with your client our tax que or, or asset-based care questionnaire, and it's going to identify all those different situations I've been talking about for the ha last half an hour. You get that back to us, and we will give you an idea of what the best products available for your client's specific situation it is. Rick, do you, do, are there some questions we need to address here? Well, I think we got, we got over uh, a lot of uh, what was coming in for questions on the last few slides there. So we, we have a number of questions about state availability, and I've tried to shoot back some, some answers uh, you know, through the uh, go-to webinar format here to a few people who had specific questions about state. Um, as far as the uh, products Grayson was talking about, they're pretty widely available. Um, 40, 50, or 40 something states for uh, the annuity product that he was talking about. The, the life product, we have a few different carriers that we use from time to time. Uh, so those are widely available. The, the Sagicor products are, are available in, I think, 40 something states, the, the One America State Life, uh, the asset care, the life product from uh, One America is uh, is very widely available. There's only a few states where that's restricted. Uh, and as far as the uh, Sagicor annuity product I was talking about, I got a number of questions about state availability there. I think I answered everybody individually, but that's available in, I think, 43 states. So and that, uh, most that of this product is, is widely available. Yeah, that product, that uh, annuity, just having nothing to do with long-term care, but that annuity out of Sagicor right now is the best thing on the market, guys. You have to uh, put that in front of some of your clients. They're going to love it. Yep. Uh, so with that, I, I think we've pretty much addressed things. Everybody feel free to give us a buzz, and we can clear up any anything else. We can help you design your cases uh, with the, once you get some information uh, on your asset base. Uh, care questionnaire. Um, also, don't be shy to ask us for that uh, version of the disclosure form that we think agents should probably use to protect themselves. That's that's between the agent and their clients and the regulators. That's just a uh, silver size that offering that as a recommended service. We have a number of things along those lines too, so uh, don't be shy to ask about that. Um, <laughs> anything else you need to cover today, Grayson? I think that I think that's about it. Unless there are any more questions, uh, I think anything left is uh, probably case specific stuff that would be easier to answer on a on a one on one basis. So uh, thanks, guys. With, with that, let's wrap up. I, I'd like to thank everybody for attending today, 
and uh, give us a buzz, and uh, we'll we'll work with you on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Thank you very much. Take care.